Hey, we're here today with Mimi, and uh, she's 35 years old. Uh, through several attempts uh, to abort her, she's been left with cerebral palsy, and uh, she's been confined to this bed for the last 35 years. Uh, this is where she eats, and she sleeps, and she goes to the bathroom. Uh, this is kind of her life, her whole life, and today, uh, we're hoping to change that with a new house, and so she's going to get a new house today. Uh, she lives here in the middle of Malawi, which is in the mountains. It's about an hour and a half from uh, a city or a town, so there's no electricity, uh, no running water. Uh, so her life has been very, very, very difficult. Uh, she's, she's never had a TV, a radio, or a cell phone, and, uh, but you'll never meet a more joyful person in your life. When we found Mimi, we found a treasure, and it's been an honor to get to know her. Uh, one particular time, uh, Bobby and I came back and uh, just to visit her and say hi and pray for her. And as we were here, a few minutes later, just a torrential downpour came. And uh, so I kind of slipped into her doorway to get out of the rain. And when I did, I, I felt the water like pelting my legs. So I turned around to look inside the house and I saw rain like just falling down on her head. Uh, in, in right on her bed and so I was shocked I was like oh my word uh, and I looked down at Mimi and she's shuffling her body trying to find a dry spot on her bed and you know my heart at that time was just grieved like wow here is a young lady in the middle of nowhere she has you know nothing uh, she has this disability and uh, she's just helpless, totally defenseless. I mean, even if a mosquito came and landed on her, I mean, she couldn't defend herself against its sting. And, uh, you know, my heart just broke. And I said, that's it. This, uh, it's God's will that we build her a house. So uh, we set out that day. Uh, and I got in front of the Lord and I prayed and asked God for the grace and the ability and the, the finances to build her a house. And so this is what started this whole venture in getting Mimi a new house. So we designed a house, got together and designed and planned a house to fit Mimi's disabilities. Uh, you know, this situation was serious, so she needed a place to where she could actually move around and get around and be a little bit more independent. So. We built the bed of her house to span most of the floor area of her house. Uh, that way it would give her a little bit of room to exercise, move around, uh, and be a little bit more mobile, and, and also see the world from a few different angles than just that one place on the bed. Uh, we also uh, thought about her conditions because she literally eats, sleeps, pees, and poops right here in this place. And so it was a little unsanitary. And, uh, and so we wanted to, to help it, help separate her, her business area from her living area. So we built her bed to actually go into the bathroom. And uh, that way she can finagle herself into the bathroom area, still being on her bed, and actually do the things she needs to do in the bathroom and then she can actually come back out and uh, sleep and, uh, and, and live on her bed without, and, and just keeping it separate. So having her disability, it makes it literally impossible for her to get water. Uh, so she totally and completely depends on her parents to get water for her from a nearby river to, to bathe herself or uh, you know, even to drink. So we came up with a gutter system uh, for her house so that we could collect rainwater and store it into tanks that we attach to the back of her home. Uh, then from these tanks, it gravity feeds into her actual bathroom area, and that way she can actually use water from the rain, and she doesn't have to actually go and get water anywhere. Uh, the good thing about the Philippines is it rains fairly often, almost every day, uh, a little bit because of monsoon rain. So this, uh, this system actually is going to work really well for her because uh, she'll always have water at, at hand. We actually placed her faucets uh, so that she could actually re uh, reach them. She has some mobility, not much, but some. So we position those faucets so that if her mom and dad go out and run errands and leave her home alone, she'll actually be able to get to the water and the faucet and actually turn it on and 
and you know bathe herself or wash her mouth or her hands on her own. Um, this will also help her mom because uh, they don't have to actually go to the river to get water. So uh, this will actually help her to get bathed a little bit more often because it's actually hard to, to collect water from the river and actually bring it to the house. So now having water at the house will give her the ability to take baths more frequently. Mimi's view of life has always been through a doorway that, that gives her only about two feet by four feet worth of view of her world uh, just to see the road or see people walking by. So in thinking about this and, and just wanting to broaden her scope of life and help her feel more involved in, in the things going on. Uh, we built the, her front wall to kind of open up and that, that allows her to like see pretty much 180 degrees uh, of, of what's going on. Uh, she lives in front of a basketball court so uh, hopefully in the future when there's basketball games she'll be able to watch them or when people walk by or kids walk by she loves kids so when they walk home from school she'll get to watch them walk home from school so um, we were really thinking about helping her just see more of her world and, and not be so confined and so being a, a young lady and being alone in your own house uh, most of you women can can relate to this just being in your home home by yourself at night even with lights it's kind of scary and so I thought about her just at home one day praying and thinking about her I, I thought about you know she's a she's a woman she's all alone in the middle of the mountains pitch black cannot see anything and just the you know just the fears that she could go through or man just the insecurity that, that darkness brings and so I actually found this solar light uh, it was about $85 I bought one and it's just so simple to, to, to attach the house I mean just very simple very easy to use uh, and and has its own switches and it also has a, a, the ability to charge your own cell phone and so uh, we installed uh, this in her house and so she's gonna get to see it today for the first time this is the first time that she's ever had electricity in her life so this is gonna be a cool thing for her. someone like Mimi she has no no way of making money so I got with the Lord and, and he just popped this idea into my, into my heart. I mean, everyone here plants corn, corn everywhere. And so I ordered these corn shellers from the States and it just popped, I had them sitting at the house and they just, the Lord dropped it in my heart. And so uh, I brought this corn sheller out and I attached it to their house and uh, we're going to make it like a business. I actually got flyers. and had uh, actually a, a lady in town for free printed a, a tarpaulin to, to promote uh, Mimi's business and so this is gonna do a few things number one it's gonna give her a way to make a just a little bit of income that way she can buy rice for herself every day or or uh, you know buy certain things that she may need the other thing is is it's gonna it's gonna attract people and try to get people coming through because you know as she is She's kind of alone unless somebody comes and visits her. She can't go visit anyone. And so this will bring people by her house and, you know, give her the ability to talk to people, give her the ability to, you know, interact with people. Because, uh, you know, thus far she hasn't had that much interaction with people. So I'm really excited about this idea and, and I'm praying that this will just really work out and, and bring the community together to help her. All right, so we're finally finished with a home. Everything's done. Uh, there may be a few things that we have to touch up as we go, but most of all, it's done, complete. Everything's done. And so today is the day that we're gonna move Mimi into her house for the first time. So in their culture, before they, before they move into a new house, they like to do a blessing. And so today, uh, we brought all the people together and, uh, and we brought a lot of food out here. And so what we're gonna do is kind of have a mini party and a blessing. We're gonna, we're gonna pronounce blessing over our home and, and prosperity for Mimi and that the Lord will pour himself out on such a precious gem that we found in the middle of the mountains. And so, uh, so today is gonna be the day that Mimi gets to actually sleep for the first time in her new house with lights and water and all of those commodities. All right, here we go. Mimi's coming out for the first time. 
She's going to be seeing her house. There you go. <laughs> wow. 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 All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're excited for you. And we we appreciate all the coffee. And the nine coffee and uh, this is a blessing for you. You okay? <laughs> 